Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Ironman. Last video, I spent two days training construction. We got up to level 82, and then we built all these upgrades in the POH. We got the jewelry box up to the second tier one. We got the pool upgraded, the fairy ring, the mounted dig site. And the overall goal that we've kind of been working towards over the last few videos is just getting Zor unlocked and getting as much stuff prepped as possible. At the moment, Spook's been training crafting, and she's so close right now. Wait, let's check uh, her stats. She is 84 crafting, almost 85. At 85, she'll be able to craft the suffering using the guaranteed plus four boost from the pie. And then at 86, she can make the fury also using the plus four boost from the pie, which means we would need two onyxes. Um, but at the moment, we only have enough cast runes to trade them in for one onyx. So the fury might have to wait for a little bit. Oh, maybe we'll get an onyx from Zora and then we can make that into the fury. But I guess since I'm talking about this right now, let's just go trade these in. I don't want to take all them on accident. Uh, let's trade these in for uh, Onyx. But before we take care of the Onyx, let's first take care of your balls with today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped and their Performance Package 4.0, which is a men's grooming kit to cover all parts of your body. Inside the Performance Package 4.0, first we have ball toner, we have ball deodorant, we have a nose trimmer, which I've actually been using quite a bit lately because I'm starting to get some nose hairs myself. Very important thing to mention, by the way, you do not want to pluck your nose hairs. That's really unhealthy. You want to trim them. It works very well for your ears too, and I feel so old doing it, but I mean, what can you do? You get older and hair starts growing in places you never thought it would grow. And then the highlight of the package, the Lawnmower 4.0, which is cordless, rechargeable, waterproof, and it has skin safe technology to help reduce nicks and cuts. And probably my favorite feature about it is that it has a built-in light, which I think is something I never realized I wanted until now when I actually have a razor with a built-in light. It also has a travel lock, so if you tap it three times and then try to turn on, it won't turn on until you tap it three times again and then I'll turn on again. The Performance Package 4.0 also comes with two extra gifts, a travel bag and some anti-chafing boxers. They have a bunch of other products too, like for example, they recently sent me their body wash, which I think smells really nice. Uh, they have a stainless steel nail kit and other stuff you can check out on their website at manscaped.com or you can use my link in the description. And make sure to use code MUDKIP20 at checkout for 20% off free international shipping, and those two gifts I mentioned before. Especially now that we're in the holiday season, it could be a good way to treat someone that you care about, or just to treat yourself, because your jingle balls will thank you. And thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Don't mind me, just gonna take the fairy ring for my POH to get over to the czar area. We'll get the Karamja gloves on so we get the most tackle possible from trading in the cast runes. And it's like just under 29k is what we need. If you didn't know, I got all these cast runes from doing barrows. Now the fastest way to do this is to go to menu entry swap or on rune light, go to UI swaps and then shift click cell 50. And then we're gonna turn our mouse keys on and if you didn't know, there's actually two mouse keys you can use to click. I mean, maybe there's a way to add even more, but just by default, you can use the five and the plus key on the numpad to sell these. So this is real time. Um, this is how fast I'm selling them. I'm pretty sure this is the fastest way to do it. I don't think there's any faster way, but it's only gonna take like one minute to sell all these probably. I'm pretty much using both fingers at the same time, pressing down on the five and the plus key to do this. And there we go, the 260k tackle that we need. Here we go, Karamja Gloves still equipped, uncut onyx, 260k. So now we are all set for the suffering. As soon as Spook gets the level, that is. I need to AFK right now for a bit so I can edit, and the AFK activity is going to be fishing Karambines using the fairy ring that I now have in the POH. It's gonna be so much nicer to get here. Well, not so much nicer, but it's gonna be a bit nicer to get there rather than going through the salve graveyard teleport portal in the POH every single time. It just makes it a little bit more AFK, although not as AFK as having the fish barrel, which I don't have, but a little bit more AFK and save a little bit of time. I'm also still not gonna be using the demon butler in the POH to bank crown bonds because I'm still a broke boy. Ooh, just to flex, we should do the first birdhouse run using the mounted dig site pendant in the POH, which reminds me, we do still have a few dig site pendants in the bank, but I mean, there's no use for them now. Probably just alk them. What are they out for? Yeah, just alk them. And it's gonna free up a bank spot too. Actually, two bank spots. Arguably even three because of this other spot that I was saving for future ruby necklaces. I guess the first time we have to configure it, so let's just set that to Fossil Island. So now we can just left click and it'll take us straight here. 
Don't forget your birdhouse runs. And we have a fishing level, there's 76. That's a very iconic 2007 level to get. Cause that's sharks. Look, there it is. She got 85 crafting, only one more for her to go, and then she'll be able to play the game. When you do your birdhouse runs, you get hunter levels, level 76. Good morning, gamers. I am done fishing Karambwans. I spent quite a long time last night fishing them. Uh, we started with 1,600, and let's see how many we're up to now. We have 3.7k Karambwans. There's the checklist again of things I want to do before Zora, or at least as many as possible. Uh, next thing we're going to do now is make recoils. What we can do first is open up all the ring nests that we got from doing birdhouse runs, and I didn't like open up any of them, maybe like a couple for like random rings I needed, but for the most part, we should have all the ring nests in here still, almost 500 of them, so let's see how many rings we have before. Looks like we have just a few emerald rings, and that's pretty much it. All the ring nests have been opened. Let's see how many rings we have now, specifically the sapphire rings, because that's what we need for the recoils. 185. Depending on how fast you kill Zora, generally one ring of recoil lasts for two kills, although if I had higher stats it'd probably be like even less, probably like 15 charges instead of 20 charges, because uh, each ring has 40 charges. But we could just round it to two Zora kills per uh, ring of recoil. And then we also have all these sapphires, so I'm going to cut all these sapphires and then we're going to make every single sapphire into sapphire rings, and it's probably going to take a while. And yes, I just ran from one bank to the other bank over here. <laughs> and we have got a crafting level. There is level 71. I think, doesn't that mean that I could boost with a pie to 75 so I can make Slayer rings if I want to unlock that from Slayer? I think that means I could do that now. And if you're wondering how I have over 5,000 gold bars, I just made a bunch of them at Blast Furnace. Uh, I think I bought most of the gold ore from the Blast Furnace, and I got a little bit of gold ore as well from killing gargoyles. And that is all of the sapphire rings made. Let's deposit all this into the bank. Uh, you can see it took about like one hour, so we got like just under 60k crafting XP. Deposit this all in the bank, and we have 871 rings. To all the haters that made fun of me for picking up sapphires while doing Slayer, even without a gem bag. Look where I'm at now. I was thinking of this meme format where she's like, beat it loser. That's me doing Slayer picking up the sapphires. And this is me now, just a Chad about to be Zora Slayer. Yeah. I'm just flexing like 87 rings on each finger. To actually make these into recoils though, we need one cosmic rune per ring. And right now we have pretty much no cosmic runes. And I have two options. Either I could buy cosmic runes and just hop world to world, either at Ali Morsane or in the Mage Arena, or I could runecraft them myself. The only issue being though is that I only have 49 runecraft and you need 59, I believe for double cosmics, yeah. But we don't need just 871 cosmics, we actually need way, way more because I'll be using the Cure Me spell at Zora, and every time you use the spell, it uses two cosmic runes, and I'll have to cast it multiple times per kill. So here's the plan, instead of just hopping worlds for like an hour, multiple hours, just buying runes, which you don't even get any XP for, we're gonna train RC up instead because I need to get it higher for quests and diaries anyways, and I'll be training it at Arania Altar, which you do still get cosmic runes from. The only thing we still need to train runecraft with is stamina potions. Uh, Spook has 73 herblers so she can get the plus 4 boost from the pie to make the staminas. She's just waking up right now so once she gets on we'll see how many super energy she has and then I could trade in the corresponding amount of marks to get amylase for her. In the meantime let's head over to Abatol and we'll make the zenite shard into the uncut zenite. Let's go ahead and we'll fuse these together on the wall of flame. And we have the Uncut Zenite coming in, coming in. Luckily, my Tears of Gothic's just reset today, so I can use my jewelry box that I have built in the POH now to teleport to Tears of Gothic's. I love flexing new stuff when I build it. Oh, look, Speak of the Angels. Spook just logged in. And how much RC XP are we going to get? It is 10,000 XP, which puts us at 50 Runecraft, and that is also base level 50s, because Runecraft is the lowest skill, so I guess every level that we get is going to be a new uh, base level for the account. Oh yeah, we have to get the pouches too, I forgot about that. Thanks for the reminder, game. It turns out Spook has about 1100 4 dose super energies, uh, so that would be 4400 doses, and one mark of grace comes out to 10 doses. So I would theoretically need to trade in 440 marks of grace to match all those super energies, but I think I'll just trade in like two to 300 for now. Emily's pack 10, 10, maybe five more. Well, I could just bought the full inventory then. All right, there goes hours and hours of training agility down the drain. Rip the recolors I could have got with that, but 
we could uh, go ahead and toss these in the group storage and then very shortly we'll have stamina pots in here. There's the medium pouch. Oh wow, that was really fast. That was like three kills later or something. It's one out of 42 and we killed 41 to get both of those. Man, I'm just remembering on the UYM how I had to go to the abyssal area many times to get the pouches over and over again or to get like random talismans. And then we have to talk to Baba Yaga first to unlock the Irania teleport spell, but I just found out that you actually have to be on the lunar spell book to unlock it with her. So let's switch real quick. There's a lunar spell I can't use my spell, but can you help me? I don't mind hearing stories. Oh god, okay, space birth through all this. And now you know the teleportation spell. Okay, cool. So we can use the Arrhenia teleport. All right, let's get everything set up. So first off, you could camp like an overhead or redemption and use rapid heal here because there's an altar, so you can just restore your prayer after each run. And then with Eniola, oh wait, you have to pay 20 runes. Wait, let me grab the mind runes first. We have all these mind runes from Barrows, which is perfect for doing Zedemai from crafting because every time you want to use the bank here, you have to spend 20 runes, and this is the perfect rune to use because I have no other use for it. If you try to bank with him, you'll get this interface, but you can actually set it up so you can skip that interface every time. Uh, you can set up quick payment deals. We're going to select mind, and now I won't have to go through that interface every time. It's just automatically going to take the mind goblin runes from me. After every trip, there's going to be a bunch of random runes in my inventory, and I'm just going to want to be able to hit deposit all. But I want to do that without depositing like my pouches and my mind runes. So what we're going to do is release all these placeholders for them, release the mind runes, rune pouch, and then put in bank fillers. So this way we can click deposit all. So it'll deposit everything except these. Should probably hide the deposit worn items button as well, so I don't deposit like my graceful and stuff. With the Runelight menu entry swapper plugin, you can change, I think this is it, for your shift click, you can make it be whatever you want. So I made it eat, wheel, etc., which also includes filling pouches. So if we go to where the essence is down here, withdraw all, and I could shift click to fill the pouches. And that way I don't have to like right click to fill or empty the pouches, or even worse, have to close out of the interface, fill the pouches up, and then spend 20 more mind runes to reopen the interface to fill up my inventory with more essence. Oh boy, let's take a look at them. 626 stamina potions. I almost forgot one extremely life-changing thing that we can do. Uh, we'll decant these into one dose potions. I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of GP because I didn't have all the vials, but this way when I drink the potion, I don't have to like put the rest of the potion back in the bank. As you can see, just with like filling the pouches, uh, if you shift click, the shift click option is also drink for the stamina potions, which you could also do from the bank interface. I hope you guys are learning a lot today about banks from this UIM X. UIM. I haven't used a bank in years, okay, so I'm the last person you should expect this knowledge from. Hopping over to the official ZMI runecrafting world, and uh, we can begin training now. Uh, one more thing I want to show you real quick, you can just use a piece of essence on someone, and it's just gonna like automatically path you like behind them, or like it paths you the same route they take, because if you follow someone you can get stuck behind things, but using an item on someone makes you take the exact route that they take. And if you didn't know about this altar, it does give you random runes, so you do get like lower tier runes, but it does give you 170% of the XP that you would normally get, which is why this is really good for training runecraft. And see, when we get here, we could just deposit all, take the essence out, fill up the pouches, do it again. One thing you can do with the GPU plugin from Runelight, you can see really far away, and even though it's not fully loaded, there is that little space in the corner that you can click on. And while you can't actually click on the altar because you can't like recognize objects from that far away that you can click on, you can still like path yourself there, so I guess maybe just forget what I said about using the essence on someone. You could just run all the way there with one click. Now hold up a minute, if I have to have the quantity set to all so I can withdraw all, doesn't that mean that when I withdraw the stamina potions to take a sip, I'm also going to be withdrawing all, so I'd either have to deposit them all after I'm done, or right click to take one? Well, there is a way around that. In the menu entry swapper plugin, bank withdraw shift click, you can make the shift click to be withdraw one. So now, even though I have it set to withdraw all as the default left click, I can shift click to withdraw just one and then shift click again to drink it. And as of the time of recording this, this is the latest news post Jagex has put out regarding third party clients, and they have confirmed that every plugin within Runelight, as well as OS Buddy, are fully compliant with Jagex's rules. First level of the grind coming in, there is level 50 Wondercraft. The bigger the pouch, the sooner it's gonna degrade. So in my case, the large pouch is gonna be the first one that degrades for me, which means it stores less essence. And this happens after you use it 31 times, but we just uh, use NPC contact to talk to the Dark Mage. 
Um, after you use it once, there's the right click option. You can just talk to the last person that you talk to or with the Runite plugin, you could also make it the shift click option. And then we just go through a couple of dialogues and it's fixed. 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. And there we go, level 59 runecraft. That is double cosmic runes now. I'm almost tempted to stay here longer, but um, Spook actually is about to get the level, uh, level 86, and then we'll be able to move on. Let's see. Yeah, she's very, very close. So we're done there for now, and uh, we can start making the cosmic runes very soon. And then uh, going by the XP tracker here, it looks like it took about four and a half to five hours, and we went through like just over 10,000 pure essence. And if you're wondering how I got the pure essence, it was mainly from gargoyles, um, but some other slayer monsters too, like worms, wyverns, abbey demons, maybe some others too. But once we start doing Zora, we are gonna have a lot of pure essence and be set forever, not have to worry about it. I don't have the quest to mine day alt essence, but if you do mine day alt essence, it is technically slower than just training rune crafting because you have to actually spend the time mining the essence and you don't really get much mining XP for it. So this is more efficient, but if you like to AFK, you could always mine day alt. Plus by using regular pure essence, it means that we get to craft more runes. And speaking of the runes, look at all the cosmics we have now, 1300. We had pretty much none before. I also put all the laws and the astrals in my inventory, so we made 1400 astrals and 600 laws. And these are the three runes that we're gonna need for the Kirimi spell, so it's nice that we got a lot of these. Oh yeah, and then I didn't need to eat any food at all the whole time I was there. I was just camping rapid heal the whole time. Okay, making the tiara. Oh, this might be a diary task to squeeze past here. Yep, hard task. Man, I always feel like this altar just looks really cool. Okay, we have our uh, cosmic tiara now. So we're gonna be making cosmic runes. As you can see, we are back on the regular spell book. So we're gonna teleport to the POH. Uh, we have the Draymond Staff equipped because we can use the fairy ring in the POH. We go past the wall right over here and there's the altar, teleport back to the GE, grab more essence and so on. And we have the stamina pool built in the POH so we don't have to use any more stamina potions. And it looks like we are gonna be crafting 84 cosmic runes per trip. Ooh, I wanna show you the high scores. I know I haven't really showed them too much in the videos lately and that's because nothing interesting has been happening, but if we refresh here after I've gained a few runecraft levels today, you could see we have now overtaken your second favorite YouTube couple and we've told them to sit the freaking heck down. Just kidding though, I love them both so much. They're both so cute. Yo Dave, you gotta change your video title bro. It should say back in the top 11. <laughs> Please laugh. Okay, we're gonna take a break, or we're done, I should say, crafting cosmics for now. Uh, looks like we ended up with 2600, and then if we go in the group storage, oh, I'm so excited to look at this. Check it out. Where is it? There we go. The Zenite Ring. 20 blood runes, 20 soul runes, one of our many cosmic runes, and then we'll drink up the wizard's mind bomb to boost to 93, and then enchant the Zenite Ring into the Ring of Suffering. Okay, we have to go imbue it though. Here's the bonuses before the imbue. It's plus 10 for the defense bonuses and then plus two for prayer. And then when you imbue anything, it just doubles the stats. And we do have a bunch of points already that I got a couple of videos ago. So 725K points to imbue it. And then if we check the stats now, you can see it is plus 20 for the defense bonuses and then plus four prayer. And this is where I would charge it up with my Rings of Recoil if I had any which I don't, but we will very soon. Now that Spook's done with the crafting and I've made a decent amount of cosmic runes for now, we are gonna do the Regicide quest, the last quest that we need to unlock Zora. And she said she put in the group storage a couple items that we need for the quest, so. Oh, hey, sorry about the wait. I have a gift for you. Oh, really? Yeah, I worked very hard to make these, so you better appreciate them. I only have them. one inventory oh. space. That's okay, I'll be your Pakiak. All right, can't wait to go through the underground pass a couple times. This is why you mark your route. The quest helper isn't gonna do it for you. And if you look on your left side here, you'll see uh, you'll see where Neve went to go to the farm. I wanna go visit her. No, you don't. Yo, hey, it's your music track right here. <laughs> it was made for you. Hilarious. Yes, we made it. No, that's <laughs> it. Make sure you spam click it so <laughs> so you don't get hit. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do we actually use catapults here? They don't use trebuchets. Everyone knows the trebuchet is the superior siege weapon. Yes, regicide is done. Frick Kip has completed regicide. Heckhoundor has completed regicide. And we get 12 agility levels from that. Not really, but we could use the fairy ring to go to Zora now and we could... We can fight Zora, although I know you're not gonna be fighting Zora. Or are you? Yeah. Are you gonna learn Zora? No. Eventually. Well, not anytime soon. 
So once I once, don't know. once I get like max gear, then I'll give it to you. You'll have like ancestral <laughs> and no, actually, you'll just use like Tebow and Arma. Yeah. Big Book of Bangs. Was this like a haircut book or something? While we were cooking dinner, I was on mobile, just very slowly AFK enchanting all these rings of recoil. I just had to finish up a couple inventories back on the computer right now. And uh, this is the last one right here. All the sapphire rings have now been made into the recoils. So we have 871 of them. We'll take these out. And each recoil that we add into the suffering is gonna add 40 charges. So we'll just add all of them into there. And that is 34k recoil charges now. This should last for like probably at least 1700 Zora, if not more, maybe closer to 2k. I like how I was talking so much smack before and now we're already back to rank 11. I love a new game mode. For my AFK time tonight, I'm gonna do some cooking. I was looking in the bank when I was trying to clear stuff out, and I saw that we have all these monkfish, and I was so confused for a second. I was like, where do these come from? I never fished monkfish on the account. Uh, except for the diary, but then I realized that these are all from Kraken. We're gonna cook that monkfish so that way we have stuff to combo eat with the Karambons. And once we go through that, maybe I'll end up just AFK cooking some of the Karambons too, because it's really annoying trying to one tick cook Karambons uh, on this oven over here because it's like far away. So you have to do a bunch of like zooming in and out like each time you run back and forth. There's 74 cooking. Okay, we're done cooking all the monkfish now, and I just wanted to mention that the cooking gauntlets do not work for cooking Karambons. And also just want to show this very, very rare occasion of me actually catching a 10 mil XP milestone at 70 million XP. And 75 cooking, 76 cooking. Okay, there is 77 cooking and that is gonna be the last cooking level that we're gonna be getting because I'm about to go to bed because it's very late. Oh, hey, that you know what? That actually works out really well. I didn't even realize that's uh, 1800 total level two. Oh, that's so clean. That's gonna be a great way to wrap up the video. In the morning though, because I don't like ending videos at night because it just sounds really tired and stuff. Although then again, you could say that I also sound tired when I wake up and then immediately start recording clips, so whatever. I just like waking up and starting a new video because it's just a fresh new day. I'm really not too worried about the food for Zora though at this point because we have quite a few Karambons and then Zora also drops Manta Rays, which would eventually upkeep themselves in the long term so I wouldn't have to worry about food there. All right, who's ready for some late night questing? Roving Elves. And through the power of YouTube editing, we have jumped 15 minutes to the future uh, to finish up this quest. We want the bow for the Western Province's Hard Diary. And that is Roving Elves done. Whoa, do we like one take that quest at the same time? <laughs> so we started Morning's End Part 1, which we're not going to do because we're going to go to bed. But that means that we have this uh, teleport crystal to get here. And there's the fruit tree patch. And it's just like faster to get here in the future so I had forgotten it was update day today but here we are we have the game update and today's update brings the GE tax into the game which of course doesn't affect me as a group Iron Man but you know the last time the British tried to tax us it didn't turn out too well for them so Hopefully it goes a bit better this time. Along with the GE tax and the item sync to go along with it, there are a couple things I wanted to point out. Uh, they added the PK skull prevention, so if you have this check marked, then it won't let you attack anyone if it's gonna skull you. If we go down to the other changes over here, UIMs, your bolt pouches won't disappear anymore. And then wait, I saw it on my phone earlier. There's like there's like a hidden thing somewhere. Um, for you, why? Wait, where is it? I can't find it. It's like, oh, here it is. This is one little tiny line. Lastly, the looting bag cannot be used in Ferox Enclave. This is very big for UIMs, and I even made a whole video about this months ago when it was first proposed. It's kind of weird they still added it for UIMs, because the only reason why they did that UIM specific pull and just didn't completely ban them from it was because the whole Willy was becoming singles plus, but they did not, in fact, make the Willy singles plus, so it's kind of weird they didn't repull it for UIMs, but... It is what it is. And with that, I think we have everything that we need to start Zora after a few videos of preparation. Next video, it is finally time. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my Duo Teammate Spook Dogs videos, which you can find a link to in every video description. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I'll see you again next time.